Good morning and welcome to the second of our masterclass sessions. We have quite an exciting lineup today. First up is Peter Crone. Peter is a member of the Gala Shields Rotary Club. He's also an assistant Rotary Public Image Coordinator. He works with Phil, an extremely well-travelled Rotarian uh, and works for the NHS in Scotland, so everything has to be good there. He is the Rotary Photographer of Choice for Rotary GB in Ireland and covers all of the main conventions. And you will recognise him as a prolific kilt wearer. Our second guest speaker is Phil Dyer. Phil Dyer spoke last month as well. He's club president of Prescott. He's also an assistant Rotary Public Image Coordinator with Peter. He's also part of the Together Talks and he's Think Differently team and is a good all-round techno geek. Now, there will be opportunities to ask questions of the speakers after sessions. Just type in your questions to the Q&A the, the, the &E box and we will talk through them. So, without any further preamble, I will welcome Peter. Good morning, Peter, and welcome to the Masterclass sessions. Over to you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome from the Scottish borders. It's uh, lovely and sunny here today, and I hope it's uh, obviously good weather wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to take you through uh, what... Um, what we've heard is at least masterclass on, on a photographer's journey, um, and I'll just start up my uh, PowerPoint. I'm a wee bit anxious here because uh, we've had a few upgrades on our laptops, but uh, I'm sure it is going to work. So I'll share my screen. Okay, hopefully can everybody see that? Right, so um, as I say, photographer story, and thank you, Irene, for the, the, the lovely introduction. Um, I've been a uh, Rotarian for about 13 years now uh, in Gala Shields in the Scottish borders. Um, what got me into doing the photos with Rotary, I mean, I, I just, take photos a bit like everybody else, but uh, I started taking photos for Rotary as basically nobody else was capturing the fantastic work that we were doing. I was going along to events and like the Young Citizens of the Year Awards, and yes, the BBC was covering the video on the day, but nobody was covering the pictures, and these youngsters were doing some fantastic stuff. So I started taking pictures uh, mainly for the young photographers, and as Irene pointed out, it, uh, I eventually got asked to, if I would cover more of the events, so I've covered for the RIBI conferences uh, all around the place, uh, and also travel around the, uh, at the Rotary conventions around the world, and I've got to say that um, there's two things why I do that, and I've put on my thing there, it gets me a seat down the front, so while all my colleagues uh, are way up the back and looking at the small dots on the screen, I'm right down the front taking the pictures and all that. Uh, it's, it's really great because it really gets you the experience up front when that. So many places that I've been to, um, I've been to the Brazil, Korea, uh, Portugal, uh, Atlanta, Lisbon, to name but a few, but hey, the great thing is it puts a different emphasis on rotary and what I use the cameras is to try and capture that so we can A, use them for the magazine or B, I think my computer's trying to update here, I'll just stop that, uh, or B, just show everybody else what's going on. As Irene said, I'm also uh, our RPIC, the Assistant Rotary International Public Image Coordinator for the area. Now, just one message I'd like to uh, if you could just take away from this, because there'll be quite a few things. If you just take away only one thing from the webinar, remember, you don't take a photo, you make it. Now, I hear quite a few people saying that you want these to be looking uh, not uh, sort of natural, don't stage them. 
you'd be lucky to get a, a good photo. And to give you an example of that, all the people of action pictures that you download from my rotary, um, these have all been actors, these have all been staged. I, I would just sort of make the point that what we're trying to do is get a, what we're doing. Uh, if you're going to do a, a get over a, a, an image or that, try and just get people to move around as you would do, say, in a wedding photo, get people set so they're all looking at the camera stage quite nicely. If you try, leave it to chance, then basically, um, yeah, one or two of the pictures might be okay, but you've really got to think about staging a picture. So it's a bit like an artist doing that. And, and to emphasize that, I'll show you this picture here. This is from Hamburg, and there was a Rotarian uh, called Pierre, which uh, obviously is French for Peter. Uh, so again, another artist. Uh, but Pierre sketched the entire convention. Uh, and as we can see down at the, on the bottom left, he captured myself, and as Irene said, uh, people know me in a kilt. So he captured me taking the photos, um, in the kilt down the front, and he incorporated it into a, a, a sketch that he was doing on polio uh, with myself taking photos down the front, and that's Pierre there uh, on, the, on the right. So I'm going to just take you through a few things uh, on the story. I'm going to meet the family, which is not my, my family family, it's my cameras, which is my kit, my family. I'm going to do a bit on, on spot the, the rotary, rotary picture, which is really, you'll, once you'll see it, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about here. And then we'll look and feel. I mean, basically, we hear about people of action. Uh, we'll do have a little look at McDonald's, uh, and then we'll convey what we're trying to get over here. And that's the burger people that uh, obviously um, Phil quite likes. Um, I'll give you a few simple tips on taking pictures. And also the use of backdrops uh, and props when we're doing our rotary pictures, because it's important to try and can get something rotary into the picture. Uh, and then I'll show you some pictures from events and, and, and then talking about making fun. And then we can have a, a little bit of uh, questions afterwards. So meet the kit. Um, I'm just going to bring it up here so I can see it. So I've got, these are the cameras that, and I've said it before, that I admit to. Um, so I've shown five cameras up here um, that I use, uh, and they're for varying purposes. The, the Sony on the, the five, oh, sorry, on the, the far uh, left uh, is a Sony 99 uh, Mark V, and that's a general all-round camera for me. It's a 36 megapixel, and I'll come to all that kind of stuff later. Um, but you know, that is a workhorse, and, and, and that's the camera I've used for a number of years. Uh, the next one is, is an, again, another 99. That's the one with the, the next one along, which has got the white lens on the front of it. And that's a 99 Mark II. It, it's exceedingly fast. <coughs> and uh, hold on, I'll just to go drink here. Uh, it's, it's fast in the sense of that camera can take 20 uh, shots a second uh, type thing, which is <laughs> it uh, 42 megapixels a picture. Uh, that's a high image quality, and it certainly rattles through the space on your memory card. The other great thing about that camera is that it can operate in a silent mode, uh, which is quite prominent with Sony's. Um, and, and the other great thing is it can focus on the eye. A lot of other models uh, from manufacturers are bringing that in now. Uh, the great thing about that is if your eye is in focus, uh, then, then the rest of the face is in focus. And, and I think it's important for us, we look on, we look first to the eyes, and if the eyes are focused, it's great. The next one along from that uh, is a Sony A7S. Now, I've had that for five years. Um, that's my go-to camera in low light. Most of the work I'm doing with Rotary is in conventions and conferences. And just as you sometimes find when you're looking at these and you're thinking, gosh, I can hardly see the speaker's face. The lighting is really poor. Uh, that's the same for me. And the Sony A7S is a camera that can operate in low light. 
And, and that's different from the other cameras in that they're all high megapixels. The Sony E7S is like 12 megapixels, which sounds, well, that's not very large. My camera phone is bigger than that. But Sony have designed that type of camera to be a bit like our eyes. It allows a lot of light in, and that's important, uh, certainly in the, when you're at low lightning in the dark. The next one along the small camera is the Sony RX1R. And the RX1R is actually exactly the same as the, the 99 Mark II, which is a high quality, um, high image camera, fast. But Sony did it as a bit of a, a, a concept. And so it's another full, what they call a full frame. And it, it's, it's really great. And it's, it's got a fixed lens on it. And it's great for just taking fantastic pictures, just walking about. And the last camera, um, and this is where I got rumbled about only having so many cameras. Uh, that camera is called the Sony RX100 Mark uh, 7. Uh, previously, I had a Mark 3, which looks identical. And hence, it's very difficult for my other half to know when I've got a new camera. Uh, however, I bought a Mark 7 when I went out to Nepal last year for a, a yoga trek, which was really interesting because I don't do yoga and I don't do trekking. And I certainly was the first time I'd walked in uh, the Himalayas. And I thought I'd, I'd get myself a new small camera just to, to uh, capture the whole thing. My wife, Gwen, noticed right away when I had it on the table out in Nepal that there was something strange about it. And what gave it away was it, it was not scratched like my other ones. Um, so, yeah, new camera. So they're all what we call full frame. Uh, and, that, and that's just the size of the sensor inside the camera. Um, most of us have a 35 millimeter, uh, a smaller uh, lay, uh, sensor, and, and they're all full frame except for the RX100, which is a, a, a normal sensor size. The other thing is I've, I've also used a smartphone now. I used to have a Sony smartphone, uh, a Sony ZX5, but the camera quality wasn't that great. Uh, so I swapped out to a Chinese um, P20 uh, Huawei Pro, which is actually great, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a uh, minute. The only thing I would say about the Huawei, the Apples, the whatever you got the Samsung, is um, I had the Huawei with me on holiday in um, Cambodia with uh, Archie Ralston and our, our wives. And in a, in a temple, I had it on a, a selfie stick, and the Huawei dropped off the selfie stick and smashed. Now, it was in a temple, and um, I was pointed out by my colleague, uh, Archie, uh, that we were in a temple, and the kind of words I was using probably weren't appropriate for being in a temple. But uh, to give you an example, the Sony ZX5, I had dropped out a window in Korea when I was taking a, a nighttime photo on the 18th floor of the hotel. It hit the balcony on the 11th floor, um, went down to the balcony, and it was slight dent in the Sony, uh, but it was still working. So that, that, that's the, the kind of difference. Most phones, if you drop them, they break. Then on to, to the lenses, um, which is the port, and I mean, we can talk about cameras, but at the end of the day, a, a lens is your eyes. So I've got three main lenses that I'll, I'm going to admit to here that I use. And I'm right next to a fire station, so you're probably going to hear yeah, the fire, fire brigade coming out. So I've got a, a Sony Zeiss um, F2.8 20 uh, 70 millimeter. That's my main lens that, I, that is good for capturing landscapes, group shots. The next uh, camera uh, uh, sorry, lens I use is a Sony Zeiss F1.8 135mm. It's a fixed lens. Um, it's a great portrait lens, wonderfully sharp images. It can see in the dark. And I'll come back to the, to do with the, all these, what I'm calling these F numbers, the 1.8. I mean, that is a really good camera. The main lens that I use all the time is the white lens uh, that you see in the picture there. And that's a Sony G Master F2.8. 70 to 200 millimeter. 
Now that's my main conference and sports lens, and it's excellent in low, low light. The problem with all these lenses is they are exceedingly heavy. Uh, and uh, after carrying them around at a conference, say for about eight or nine hours, it, it does get a little bit tedious. So I'll just mention quickly that the, because most of you probably take photos with a smartphone, and, and, and I got to admit that I do a lot of my pictures now with a smartphone. The smartphones have improved immensely in the past couple of years. I've got a P20 Pro. They're now on a P40. Um, it's got I me mean, again. This has got Leica lenses. The Chinese have got Leica teamed up with them, and they've got Leica lens three on the back to cover all your zooms. It's got artificial intelligence on it. It can un actually analyze the picture at the, that you're taking. And as you can see at the bottom there, that's taking a picture of macaroons. It knows it's food and it automatically adjusts it to taking a picture of food. That can work about 80% of the time, but the, the, the other part of the time, you might want to take control over that uh, artificial intelligence because it might not be conveying the picture that you want to take. But I've got to say that the artificial intelligence has now come fully into the latest cameras uh, and certainly if you want to take a picture quickly and on the move you know nine times out of ten you can rely on, on that currently now i'm taking less rotary pictures uh, and more family pictures as we're all in you know we've been in lockdown coming out of it so little larry there was my granddaughter she was born uh, when I was obviously away at a rotary event down at the Institute, which was quite expensive for me because it cost me quite a bit in the bar. But again, you know, take, taking these pictures, um, uh, these are all done in, uh, I've used manual to do that because again, a lot of light, uh, kids move about and, and I've got to use the speed of the, uh, the camera to, to up the shutter speeds. And again, on, on the right hand side, the picture there, I'm getting, I'm getting right down, and that's taken from quite far away with a zoom. Uh, and it's the, behind the. Uh, I'm trying to blur the background with um, the, the 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 lens and all that. And again, I'll come back to later about uh, use of uh, shutter speeds and all that type thing. We'll not go too much into that now. But again, what I've used in that, just to, what I've used in that picture to capture this sort of when we're being out in the sun there, was I've used a slow shutter speed, um, just to, the, the, to see the water coming out the, the actual hose. If I used a fast shutter speed, which might be quite good because kids do move about quite a bit, then what that captures the water droplets in the air, and that's not what I wanted for this one. I wanted to to get the motion. What the main purpose of the um, when I talk to you about some of the stuff that we're doing is stereotypes. And it's important because we all stereotype people, and especially we sometimes feel that Rotarians are stereotyped. So I'm going to give you a bit of facts about people and their cameras. Um, and this is obviously from the internet, which means it is true. So generally, people who buy Nikon and it's not Nikon because we're not, well, most of us are not American, so it's Nikon. Um, and the same as it's not data, it's data. Uh, and I could go on, but um, I blame uh, Sesame Street for all this. But it's on Nikon, the people who buy Nikon cameras, uh, and I'm speaking like an American now, uh, only shoots uh, Astro uh, and C Astro and Seascapes, that's, you know, nighttime skies, loves the D lenses, they're always talking about their D lenses doesn't understand the concept of taking videos with a camera uh, and straight up these kind of people just love photography the other thing about people who buy nikon cameras is they tend to a uh, majority of them buy bmws and if they have a, a fancy nikon camera with fancy lenses they tend to have uh, bmws like the bmw uh, mark um, m5 m uh, mark or the m3 type thing Moving on to Canon, majority of Canon users have some kind of wedding or event photography business, uh, and they want to be a vlogger, people who take um, video uh, of themselves speaking to, to audiences on the internet and social media. Uh, the only thing they look for in a photo is bokeh, 
and Bokia is that when I've shown you the picture of the uh, the little one, it blurs the background and you see little circles behind it. it just so Canon people really talk about Bokia. There tend to be people who are fun at parties. Um, then we move on to Sony. Sony users, um, they only, and it says that Sony users only shoot in conditions where there is no light. It uh, doesn't shut up about the dynamic range of their camera, and that's probably true. Uh, and they've got a short attention span, uh, progressive, uh, and I don't know what that means, most likely on Supreme. It goes on, but I think the point I'm, I'm, I'm making here about is there are stereotypes uh, that we tend to perceive, whether it's the cameras we buy, the, the watches we buy, the phones we buy. So then why do people have stereotypes of Rotarians? That might be to do with the kind of photos we put up on the internet of ourselves. And we're going to get warmed up a little bit and, and, and see what I mean here. So we're going to try and spot the rotary in, in the picture. So this rotary picture, this picture potentially of a Rotarian, uh, picture one. So usually what we do with audiences is to see whether this is a uh, rotary or not. And it, you know, it looks like rotary because it's a, a lineup, it's got a glass presentation there. But actually, it's a Dunbar bowling club. So the next one, yeah, nice uh, diverse group of people stand in a line, which is usually I like how we take rotary pictures. But that's the San Francisco round table. This next picture, yeah, handing over some, I think it's a turkey Christmas sort of thing. And yes, it is rotary. The only thing that gives it away with rotary, right? In, the guy in the back uh, has actually got a rotary badge on his top type thing. But that's the Rotary Club, Club of Merrillville. This next one, you're thinking that's definitely rotary because again, it's one of the no-nos I don't like doing. It shows them as having a drink on the table, food. Uh, we always seem to be taking pictures and going in the papers or on social media of drinking and, and, and eating. Um, this is actually a round table of London. Yep, there's a good reason why that you know we, we drink a lot. Probably it's because we've got a lot of round table people in it. So they're there to blame. So this this next one, yeah, that's definitely going to be rotary. Bib and Tucker, all blokes, got to be rotary, but no, that's the South Southam Lions Club. So yeah, it's not just us. So this next one, two things about this picture. It's not too clever uh, because the, because of the lighting that's come into it. This is one that was on the social media page. Um, and I'll put you out in misery, yep, it is the Rotary Club of Edinburgh, uh, and you can tell that by there's some of the badges, and there's, yep, the, the guy that's got the chain on. It's got to be a Rotary, it's got a chain on. This next one I took from social media, um, it's a Rotary Club, yep, we've got the banners in the background, and also it's telling something about the picture, it's a quiz. So it's actually, it's telling a story, and that's, I think, what we what we want to 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 do. And the last one I'll bring up, well, of course it's, uh, yep, it's Rotary and it's that uh, uh, Jennifer Jones, um, whose uh, name is in the social media just now. She's going to be our, our RI president in 22-23, which is absolutely fantastic news. And the young guy next to Jennifer, um, and I'm not going to say if I photoshopped that picture, but the young guy is Archie Ralston, and Archie Archie is everything to do with public image supply through Rotor Story. Fantastic amount of effort that that Archie does for public image in that. So again, what we're trying to get over is the look and feel to to some of our pictures, and this is what the people of action. And we'll just have a quick look at McDonald's uh, for the reason here. This was a, a case from a couple of years ago, uh, and these two young guys that we see on, on the, the right and left here, these guys went into their favourite McDonald's and noticed there was a space there uh, on the wall. But the other thing, predominantly, what they noticed is that all the pictures on the wall didn't dis, dis, depict 
anything to do with any Asian. They were very typically white um, American, nothing that showed the diversity of the people who come in at McDonald's. So what they did is they had a look at the, the pictures and as we see on the right hand side, what they did was they actually recreated a, a, a McDonald's picture. They came back into McDonald's dressed up in actual uh, McDonald's gear, they got it printed up and hung the picture on the wall. It was there for 51 days before they put this tweet up uh, uh, and of course it was taken down, but not before they appeared on uh, a well-known TV show in America and McDonald's was really thankful for all the publicity and gave them $25,000 each. Uh, yep, it was a check presentation as well. Uh, but you know, what, what I'm trying to say there is actually the look and feel of McDonald's is a bit like what we're trying to talk about, the look and feel of public image and rotary pictures and true people of action. So that's what we've been trying to get over here in public image is to do with the activities we're doing. Uh, Phil's going to be coming on next and doing a bit more, so I'm not going to say too much on putting these templates on. But you know, it, it, it's kind of showing the activity that we're, we're actually doing rather than just, just taking a picture of a group of people handshaking and handing over a check. These are a couple of pictures that uh, I took. Uh, on the left hand side um, is from the Limbs Centre, the Rotary Limbs Centre in Karachi when I visited there uh, a few years ago. Uh, and again, this guy had come in uh, in the morning and, and by the, the end of the day, they'd kitted them out with the artificial limbs, a bit like what we've seen in the Jaipur limb. Fantastic effort they're doing. Um, and again, a picture of the, on the right hand side is the Young Chef competition. Again, just trying to, to convey to the audience what we're actually, what we're doing. Look and feel the pictures, yep. You can take pictures, I mean, what Rotary have been trying to get with people actually, you can take individual ones or groups. Groups, you've got to watch that if in a group it's trying, what are you conveying over to the audience? What are you trying to say in the message there? And I would tend to, to steer away from some of them. The other thing is about some of the, the metaphorical and conceptual images that we're trying to get over, like teamwork, clean water by using you know, a, a water uh, sample. Uh, and polio vaccine, we've got a lot of pictures getting taken off polio droplets going into people's mouths to convey. So basically what, what I'm trying to convey over there is the photographs should focus on connections and, and the community. So what we're do, saying is do, when, when telling a rotary story, you can express more with a photo that shows action, show the children and the people who benefit from the rotary service, make photos of them involved in the project. Avoid photos that present a stereotype, rotary, or of people. And a big, just don't do, um, a common rotary photo is the big check presentation. And I'll not say too much more, but you know, we love to hand over checks. But if we just want to be known as people that hand over checks, then fine, but I, I think we're much, much more than handing over checks. Uh, also, the Pictures on social media and the newspaper need to tell a story and be appealing to stop the reader and, and make them to read more. So, given a, a little bit of feel there, you know, people like to hand over checks, and this is just a few um, examples of it. Um, what I would say is the check there that we gave, the £6,000 that Rotary in Scotland gave over to the Scottish schools was to do the actual on the Scottish school sports because certainly businesses are finding it very tough to now uh, and they don't get much from the sponsorship of, of that. Rotary feels it's worth investing in, in the youngsters so hence try and get pictures of the actual activity that you've been putting in the press with that but try and get some um, banners in behind it with actually Rotary. It's not just you and I and the clubs that do that. Um, big, chen, big check presentations uh, are also done by the high heed ones, as they would call it. Uh, and this was at um, the Hamburg conference. 
when they were shown a check presentation from all the taxi drivers. So the, the taxis were given a donation of all the money from Rotarians going around Hamburg, uh, and they raised uh, and they handed over a check for 70,000 to Rotary at the convention. As I said, I mainly take pictures at the, the convention uh, to try and convey back, and you've probably seen uh, a lot of pictures with um, Barry Rassen, the past RI president, with the flamingos and all that. Um, taking pictures at conferences is quite difficult because of um, there's a number of factors and it's quick for lighting and, and that, and you can't tend to use tripods because it gets in the way of people. And it's important to try and get sharp pictures and images, uh, it, which is very difficult, and I'll come on to that. Um, one of the guys uh, in that picture doesn't like to stand still, and I'm not going to say what one it is in the red suit. Um, so again, I've got to be shooting with quite a high shutter speed, but when light is low, it, it can be quite difficult. So it's just giving you an idea of the kind of pictures taken. So remember, I opened with, uh, you don't take a photograph, you make it. Uh, smartphones are catching up fast on high-end spec cameras, and, and actually they're really great. Uh, artificial intelligence software in phones is good when it works, but you need to know a few basics when it doesn't. Uh, so no matter if you have a top-of-the-range Nikon, Canon, Apple, etc., etc., you still need some creative flair to take a and create a good photo. So the camera is just not going to take it for you. So I'm going to go into a few tips uh, and understanding of doing that, and I'm going to look at comp what we call composition, which is the art of choosing what goes into a photograph and where, as well as what's left out, how to avoid camera shake, choosing the right ISO, and I'll come back to what ISO stands for because it's an acronym, and then we'll go into things like light. Rule of thirds, split. You'll hear this quite, quite uh, quite a lot. The rule of thirds is actually breaking the screen up into uh, three three sections. And what you're really what it's really meaning is in, on any of the the elements of the third of the picture. So instead of putting somebody right in the center, here you've got the tree on the line that is on the, the so moving the tree to the side. And where it intersects, and I'm trying to show there with those lines like that, that's where the eye picks up and it leads people in, rather than the, the, the tree being plonked straight in the center. So setting out, and again, it comes back to you like what Pierre was doing with sketching. He's sketching out and, and putting things to try and draw the person into the sketch and make convey what he's trying to get over as the image. That is the same for photography. You're trying to lay out the image to bring the eye into the picture. So laying out the screen and getting things just right. So if you rule, use this rule of thirds principle, placing things uh, in each of the sort of set, cross sections, that is where people's eye will be drawn. So what they talk about is adhering to what they call is the golden ratio for a perfectly balanced and eye-pleasing photo. Coming back to artistic, the Mona Lisa down in the, the, the bottom uh, right there, so your left, I'm looking at it in a different way, is it uses a triangle uh, aspect, and that, that means it's balanced, it's pleasing on the eye, there's a curvature uh, as well, so the eye is led from the hands into the face, into the eyes. Um, so putting the subject along a curved line rather than a straight grid line uh, draws the viewer's eyes around the picture. So we can see on the, the right-hand side that the, we look at the young boy looking in, and then the curve goes right round and takes us through the picture. I hope this thing's not going to update my... Avoiding camera shake. There's two things. One, one, one is there's a lot of uh, built into cameras now uh, stabilization both into the camera and into the lens. If a lens, if a picture isn't focused, it, it tends not, it, you lose a bit of interest. So when you've got a camera, if you don't think about smartphones, but if you've got a camera with a lens on it, the rule of thumb here is not to shoot at a shutter speed 
that is slower than your focal length. And what I'm saying is, if the focal length on your that I'm using in one of my zoom lenses is say uh, the 70 to 200, if I'm shooting at 200 millimeter, then what I would say is the minimum shutter speed that I would use is probably around about 200 of a second. If you use too slow a shutter speed, and the reason you might be doing that is to let more light in, then what you'll get is like what you see on the Taj Mahal picture there is on the left hand side is it becomes blurry. Unless you've got rock steady support. The next thing I'll talk about is, I mean, we, we mentioned on cameras is this to do with ISO. And it harps back to a time for majority of Rotarians are quite elderly and they will know right away what ISO and it comes back to a time of when we had a uh, films. So ISO stands for International Standards Organization and it refers to the industry norm for sensitivity of emulsion based film. So film that we used to put into our cameras, 26 exposure, 36 exposure uh, and, and it was either 100 ISO. Now 100 ISO was, uh, wasn't so sensitive and, uh, 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 and hence you would use that uh, type of film when it was good sunlight, outdoor good sunlight. 600 ISO film was extremely sensitive to light. That's where, when I used to sneak my cameras into Queen concerts, um, various other concerts like Thin Lizzy, I'm, I'm giving my age away now, and that. I used to sneak my cameras, um, my, my, the body down one sock and my lens down the other sock and put them together, but I needed to have a high ISO because you, what you needed to is to capture the, the, the light within a concert. And whilst the lighting on stage was good, um, it certainly it's not as good as direct sunlight, and it's not as uh, uh, in that. So you need a, a a film that was more susceptible to to light sensitivity. Now that has creeped on into digital cameras. So I, I think it's it, it's a way just of conveying how much um, in, information, how much light, and also the lower the ISO. The, the less grainy the picture. So if you, you notice that some pictures are quite grainy, um, then they've got the, it's, it's been shooting quite high. So the ISO determines how sensitive your camera is to light and how fine the grain of what we're saying is. So in this example outside, the shutter speed is a fifth of a second. The aperture is, which I'll come to explain about is F, uh, F4. The ISO speed is 320, and we used flash to, to, to do that. So, you, just going back to that, the, the reason for the flash is as well is because if you didn't use flash, it wouldn't illuminate the face in front of you, type thing. The other important factor is what they call white balance, and light it comes at different temperatures, and we know that from in the morning. We always know that when the sunlight comes up, the colours of the grass, the colours round about us feel really warm, they're good. Midday, the, the colour is, uh, the, you know, the light is very harsh uh, and things are bleached out. And then at night time again, the, the colours are, are more warm again. It's no different in uh, with lights. So indoor, uh, with a light, you would have maybe a tungsten lamp. Uh, or a halogen lamp, and these have a light temperature, um, and hence what you see there. If it's a tungsten lamp, it tends to be quite orangey in colour. Uh, if it's a, a filament lamp, like a, they can be quite uh, um, green in colour, like fluorescent. Um, what a camera will do is you have white balance, and what you're trying to do then. It'll change the orange so you think it knows then that you are shooting in tungsten and it will then balance it out. And what you see then on the left hand, uh, from the left hand side to being orange to the right hand side to being white. So it actually makes the, the color what it should be. Our eyes tend to adjust, but a camera can often need uh, help in, in doing that. The other thing I would say watch 
uh, is when we're doing rotary photos is is using software. Um, not going to mention too much about this uh, young lady. This young lady is quite a prominent lady, um, a good Scotswoman who is, and I'll say it, it's Anne Gloke, who's the owner of First Bus and all that. Anne is not the kind of person you would take an empty pay packet home to. She's quite a prominent person, uh, very forceful, but absolutely does some wonderful work in charity. Uh, but this was Anne speaking. I run this uh, through the software I have from America, uh, Portrait Pro, and this is what it does to the picture. So again, coming back to Rotarians, you know, is it the truth? Um, Photoshop or Portrait Pro, as we say, so we go back to that the original picture. So yes, um, there are a few Rotarians who have asked me to touch up their pictures, um, but it's it's not right. I mean, you can do some, uh, you, you can touch up some elements of a picture um, if you want to, like take somebody out of it that you don't want. Um, but I would refrain too much from doing too much on the way of touching up. The next thing I would do is, is a tip that you will always get. Photography people always talk about the, the cameras, and, and this again is the difference between a Canon user and a Sony user. So on the, the, on the left hand side, you can see there's the Canon, big, bold, massive. Um, not saying that's like the Canon users in general, but you know, the Canon's a big camera. The Sony equivalent of that, um, the, the Sony E9, which will be my next camera because I need it, um, as you can see, quite a lot is half the weight and it is a lot smaller uh, in that. But again, people do, people have brand loyalty, so a Canon user isn't going to use Sony. Uh, I, I personally, I, I would use anything that would take a, a picture of. You know, I, I buy the cameras, and it's only I only buy Sony because I know how to use them. So I would say invest more in learning and less in fancy gear. And also we mentioned about uh, smartphones, and I'm just going to show you a difference between what uh, the smartphone uh, and the, the camera. So on the, the left-hand side of the picture here, this is from the conference in Ireland. Uh, we have the picture taken with the, the, with the camera. Uh, and on the right-hand side, we've got a reasonably good attempt, uh, I would say, uh, and that's by the, the smartphone. <coughs> It kind of smooths a bit of the lines because it's attempting to to get a you know a capture of the picture, and for for a quick picture to social media, it's actually not they're not too bad. What we've got here is again the difference on, on the left hand side we've got the a camera picture, and on the right hand side we've got the the, the smartphone. The smartphone was maybe getting a little bit uh, caught up with what we called that the white balance. So you got the the spotlights are causing a little bit of the the orangeness. If we spent maybe a bit of time, uh, we could adjust that out, or or some of the actual artificial intelligence is actually getting quite good now. It would do that automatically. And on the bottom pictures, uh, again the difference being there on stage, which is actually quite difficult to 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 do sometimes. Um, on the on the left hand side, we've got the camera taking a picture there. And on the right, we've got the smartphone, which is a little bit blurrier, but it's it, what it's done there is it's attempted to <coughs> take pictures of the audience as well. Just showing you a couple of pictures and, and some of the problems then we've got uh, we, when we're taking pictures, the backdrop there from a, a, a convention is actually, just going to take a drink here, is actually LED illuminated. And so it can cause a little bit of problems with the, the camera capturing it, and you can see that slightly with the picture. Um, and also, as I mentioned before, well, is, is people moving about. So I'm having to use on the on the right hand side picture uh, a quite a high shutter speed um, to capture that picture because he just doesn't keep still. Um, however, it, it is sharp, and the reason for that is that the Sony camera, the one that I said uh, my go-to camera, the Sony. A7S 
I, I can actually increase it up to, to be quite high in ISO, so it can let a lot of light in, so it's very sensitive. So then I can use the right amount of uh, depth of field to, to capture that. That was the, the head of Toastmasters worldwide at the Hamburg conference. That was quite a difficult picture to capture because somebody should have had a word with her about what maybe to wear and what not to wear. The colors with the spotlights were uh, quite difficult because it's between her hair color, her clothes uh, and the spotlight on, it's kind of bleak, it was kind of bleaching her out. Um, but again, that aside, the camera can take care of that um, by adjustments. And again, what's important then is we've got the, the rotary emblem in the background. Just showing it, I mean, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that is capturing at conferences and again, um, the use of it. I mean, rotary conventions, conferences, what we're trying to convey back is it's not just about, you know, maybe listening to speakers, you've got um, various entertainment on. The other thing they always tell you about is animals and children and, and never put them on, on stage or on camera. Um, so there was Mark Maloney bringing the, the, the family on stage. Well, the young one was never going to be sitting still. Um, so yeah, he had a good run about the stage, which actually, you know something, family, it isn't about stage pictures. And, and Mark was really good about it. Uh, some people might have got annoyed, but you know, it, it, it just breaks the ice. Again, here is a, uh, some of the pictures, and these can be quite difficult. Um, again, with lighting at conferences, again, trying to, to get it uh, captured. White jackets are always quite tricky with a spotlight on them because, again, it bleaches out, and, uh, and that's where the camera is quite good. And again, it's good to capture the moment uh, in that sense. Here's some pictures of Jennifer with Bella Field um, uh, and that, and again, it's good to capture. And again, talking about activities like the, the end polio, and that's Jennifer there. Looking at some of the pictures when we're doing events, trying to get themed up. Uh, this is uh, with uh, Doddy Weir, um, the rugby player up our neck of the woods, who's got MND, that he's done a lot of awareness. We offered to help uh, do fundraising for them at the Melrose Sevens. I wanted to do it for, for polio as well, so we themed up the tops and actually we raised four four and a half thousand pound on, on the day at that, um, which was exceedingly good. And again, when you're doing events, trying to capture things, get a bit of activity into it. We've got the ice cream going here, we've got the purple for polio, the purple pinky going on, a bit of razzmatazz. Uh, tell a picture, make a little bit of fun. We've got the we got the police involved here, putting their pinkies on. Uh, and then when we're at the Highland Games, when we're doing things, uh, get a bit of fun. And uh, this was bringing the people into the stand using you know hula hoops and all that. So again, the the older guy, the Rotarian with the kilt on, he he wasn't that clever at the hula hoop. And, Again, we do a lot of pictures like with if we were doing events with the Santa Sleigh, which is a but try and get a, a rotary onto there as well uh, when you're putting the pictures in the press. And the use of props in that. I mean, a couple of young ladies here that are, are obviously we've given them the, the rotary flag. Uh, Sammy Kinghorn uh, became world champion at the wheelchair racing and young citizen of the year. And Again, uh, this is from the Scottish schools on the right hand side. So use props and flags. The difference being is, you know, when, when, you, when you use that, um, you, you, you start to get that rotary into the picture type thing. And again, a lot of this information, like the props and that, are available from a, a very reputable uh, rotor store. Um, or if you're a rebel, you get your flags from Spain, but we'll not talk about these people. Uh, and again, when we're taking the pictures, you know, try and get the rotary into the picture with the emblem. Um, maybe I went a little bit too far with uh, Alistair Seal down in the bottom um, bottom right, uh, in that uh, I got the projection to put rotary's emblem on his uh, forehead. But 
yeah, it gets the point over. And again, using a bit of action into the shops, shots there. The only thing is you gotta watch because there's always a club who puts the old banner behind it and, and ruins it. I mean, I have other pictures, but it was just to, to get over that we need to get that the current branding in there. Uh, the last time Archie and I were at um, the Scottish schools, we snipped off all the old branding. Uh, we didn't go down too well with the, the, the local Rotarians, but you know, there you go. This picture here, again, if you're taking pictures, it is actually quite uh, apt because it's uh, linked to rotary, rotary is a bit more than you, usual. This is Ralph uh, Silcock and his sister, Mary Silcock, competing at the Scottish schools in Glasgow. And Ralph and Mary are the great, great nephew and niece of Paul Harris. Uh, and certainly, so again, it, it just shows you, and it, it was some of those pictures uh, that we took of uh, Mary. Uh, sadly, Ralph wasn't too, too good an athlete, uh, but Maddie was very good and went on to actually win her, her section. And when you're doing it, have a bit of fun. This is at the Kelpies uh, in Scotland here. If you're coming up to Scotland uh, to visit, lovely, lovely centre. You know, we put in Tunnock's Tea Cakes um, umbrellas because Tunnock's gave us some, uh, some uh, uh, tea cakes to, to give to the kids. So we got that in. Uh, and again, it meant when we were taking the picture, Tunnock shared it on their social media as well. All in all, what I'd also like to say is, is have a bit of fun with some of your pictures because don't show us just with, you know, handing over a check, a presentation. You know, we have a lot of fun. And this is again, pictures of when we're out and about. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, uh, that young Rotarian, Mr. Ralston, uh, when we're out in the, the Brazil, uh, and of course he had to get his a couple of rotary wheels into it, uh, and there's Mary Poppins holding a rotary wheel. Um, shows you in a crowd down on the on the right that if you have the rotary wheel uh, in the carnival, you can spot it in a crowd. The picture in the centre was when we were up uh, Christ the Redeemer, and we had a rotary wheel, and we bumped into Miss Rio. I did a video uh, with Miss Rio and she conveyed back to one of the Rotarians in Scotland. Um, well, I'll not say too much more, but he was hook, light, and sinker with that one. And again, we have a bit of fun because uh, some of us have the kilts and and and, and, and drink the monkey shoulder whiskey. We have the monkey shoulder badge. And what I had a video done there with Michelangelo Caruso was that I pointed out that the monkey shoulder was the most secret. A rotary a club because be, but, uh, behind every monkey shoulder as we can see badge is actually a rotary pin so rotary underpins uh, the monkey shoulder society all a bit of fun we can have pictures of having fun and, and here's the public image team out in germany at hamburg having a little bit of beer I'm not sure we'd put, probably put too much of that in the press but again i think if we're conveying that it isn't just about um having a having a, a very serious time and this is from uh, in, again the great thing about when we're going around on the left hand side is again mr ralston who always gets uh, my photos and, and and what looks like dolly parton uh, but it was actually a cardboard cutout cut um and, and this is some colombian rotarians a number of years later down the right and there's archie with the same colombian rotarians in hamburg so again, you build up friendships. So thank you for watching and listening. And uh, we're going to take any questions. So I'll stop sharing now. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, I was really engaged and interested in that. I think I've maybe got a bit of an eye, but I've got zero technical ability. So it was really interesting to hear what you had to say there. Uh, we have a few questions. Now, we've got uh, a question from Jeff from Prescott Club. Yeah. He's asking, he's got a few questions, so I'll take them in turn. What is the tactic, if there's a tactic, for taking children photographs, children's photographs? Thanks very much for that one. We, I usually get that one. Uh, mm -hmm. If I give you an example, at the Scottish schools, um, what we do there, because it's run in conjunction with Rotary and Scottish Schools, they do all the bureaucracy 
and we help out and do what we do. On the forums there, we explicitly state that they're signing, that we will have like the cameras there, like BBC could be there, we will be there, and we will be taking pictures. And should anybody not want their picture taken, then in, in that circumstances, like if you go to any track and field event, we, we couldn't, like the BBC couldn't take their picture out. So hence, they, they basically can't take part. I have had Rotarians, when I mentioned that before, saying that's not fair. And I says, well, if, you, if you're competing at a, a, a level like at Scotland level or UK or, or world level, then that's just the case. If we are taking pictures like at um, events, then we, like on the, 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 the Santa sleigh, and we take pictures, we ask permission, first of all, uh, for that. And if they don't want their, their picture to be used, that's fine, because we know that. Uh, and sometimes people just want the picture, so we would just give them the picture. So yes, ask permission uh, from that. I know we start to go technical when you're out in public, and you, know, you don't need to ask permission to take pictures if it's in a public area. But quite often, we're taking pictures within shopping malls or, 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 or that. So we have to abide by the rules of these organizations. And quite frankly, if we offend people by taking somebody's picture that doesn't is are not happy, then I think we should ask for it. So we must ask for permission first in that sense. Permission. So get permissions up first, first especially with youngsters. Yeah. Thanks for that, Peter. Now, the other question that Jeff's asking, this is about the, the group shot. Now, you, we, we, you spoke earlier about the, the Czech presentation and how to do this. Now, we are, as a group, are very fond of the Czech presentation. It's always very difficult to get around it. So what advice have you got for the group situation and how to get around not taking the, the Czech? What do you do when you've got right. money? So I'll give you an example. Um, my own club loves taking check presentations and they sneak behind my back and do it because uh, you know, I'm, I'm not taking it, it's not going up on social media, I'm not doing it. One of the examples of that is that what we do in Scotland uh, 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 at the uh, Gala Rotary is we collect milk bottle tops uh, and we have collected over the past nine years 41 tonnes of milk bottle tops that we get recycled. So what we do there instead when we're handing over the check is we we made up with the green mill ball tops uh the number so if we've got a uh, two thousand pounds given to us for the milk board it's showing that uh, and with all the bags of actual milk bottle tops behind us they all get recycled and turned into matting fiber optic but it's showing the activity so you do it by different ways of doing things or get the kids if it's youngsters you've given something to a school get each of the the letter you know the numbers uh say like a thousand pounds and and do, so get them holding that but get them holding with some rotary wheels or or flags or something like that as well so it is it's trying to get the activity get it in a different manner but do convey that we you know we've given over some money but get it in a sort of my own, the only feedback I get from my own club uh, was that, that that takes a bit of time to think and can we not just hand over the cheque? Um, so, yes, a cheque's easy, but it does take a little bit of thought to, to get something a little bit different or even make shapes out of people, uh, you know, like they've, you do it like when you used, when people like Phil or Phil's age used to do YMCA, you know, make, you make all the, the YMs and, you know, do things, be imaginative, be fun. Yeah, it is about putting a thought back into it. I mean, I see your own background there. You've got the rotary background there. In your photographs, you certainly have the wheel. I've done some little videos with the wheel behind me. It makes the difference. But you're right, it's about thinking about it before you go to the check presentation or to the project. Um, now, the last question that Jeff has, oh, yeah, Jeff's been busy. So he's asking, at conferences, do you use a flash? And if you don't, why not? No. no, I don't no. use a flash. Over. Now that, 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 that is, the reason for that is mm -hmm. I get annoyed if there's flash guns going off all over the place. Because, mm -hmm. And it's annoying for the speaker as well. Um, so that the reason for having the cameras that I have, in, no, I think I, should, I can hear the, the grass cutter, so Gwen is outside cutting the grass. So the lenses can cost 
over £2,000 each. Hence, sometimes I do get a little bit annoyed when some Rotarians drop them. Uh, and I have had my lens and my camera dropped a few times by people. And hence, you know, I have been too happy. But the point of these lenses is they're like, they're, they're like our eyes. The lens will widen to let more light in. So these lenses that I have, and that's, uh, I didn't go into the, the F numbers. You know, it, so an F 1.8 lens opens up really wide. And an F 5.6 lens you know, it's very, you know, it's very small. Uh, there's a the camera here. So it's, it's 5.6 allow has to open for much more shutter speed time to let the light in. Where if I open it up wide, it lets a lot of light in quick. So hence I can take pictures with my, what, that, one of the Sony cameras with the right lens in just about pitch darkness and it'll do it. So that's the difference. Um, flash gun, is is good in certain occasions, but I'll, I will tend to use, if I'm doing a group shot, I'll use LED lights. And, you know, they're quite cheap, get them, um, and, and just illuminate from the side so that it, it's, flash can often be quite harsh, uh, and you try and make things natural. So, no, I don't use flash at uh, uh, conferences because I, I think it's mm -hmm. annoying. And, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get a natural colour as well. Mm -hmm. No, thanks for that. Now, Malcolm, Malcolm Ross, who was uh, formerly from my own club in Warrington, he's talking about uh, that you mentioned in many situations, uh, Rotarians would only have a smartphone to hand. And he says that the pictures can be great, but they can also be digitally manipulated, cropped, and produce as good as results. I mean, I think you may have answered this, but um, he's talking about what we have as Rotarians to our hands, really, and uh, how we can do make the best out of it. You know, Smartphones are fantastic. As I say, the, the, the Huawei that I have is absolutely terrific at taking pictures. Um, I haven't shown other pictures that I do. I took the, the Huawei and the, the, my cameras away to Nepal with me. Um, sometimes I was wishing I hadn't taken the Sonys with me because the cameras in the backpack were weighing um, around about 15 kilogram. And to give you an example, the, the clothes that we were allowed to take in the backpacks that the chefs took, had to, everything in the backpack, including sleeping bags, had to weigh no more than 12 and a half kilograms. I soon realised when I was up at uh, four and a half, just under 5,000 metres, the reason why you don't carry 15 kilograms of cameras on your back. Uh, and a smartphone, and I've got to say a lot of the times with the right light conditions, the smartphones were really really fantastic and, and you're getting some great shots and it is about capturing the moment the time you take to get maybe set up a camera is that just a little bit longer and the moment may have gone so i would say quite rightly no smartphones for the majority of time with social media are absolutely fantastic i just have a, a problem because uh, I'll, i've got the backdrop so my, my hands are like uh, a wee bit big Holding a smartphone is sometimes a little bit difficult, where I can hold a, f a camera uh, in one hand uh, and, and quickly manipulate it and all that. It's just what you're comfortable with. Um, and the other thing is, you know, when, I, when I'm wearing two uh, cameras around my neck, it is a lot of weight. Uh, and just the last example of how heavy they are, I tend to take the cameras and put them on straps when I'm going through security through the airport because they always exceed the weight limits of hand luggage. Um, or I get my friends to take them as well. Um, that's why I take them along. That's why Archie comes with me to things, just yeah. to carry my cameras. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, it is a good point. This is what we have. Smartphones, smartphones are fantastic. Yeah. And, and the, yeah. the thing about it is the new cameras, the one that's why I need a new camera. The new cameras actually have link um, directly up to, to, to smartphones. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and it's interesting because Alan Ingram, I'm not sure where he's from, and it's some, a question that was in my head was around, you, you know, your digital cameras will take high res, resolution photographs, and that's great for publications, but your smartphones are absolutely fantastic for the social media. So he's saying, what's the best source for high res photos suitable to show rotary and actions? So it's, it's horses for courses, I think. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, and there's some great images on Brand mm -hmm. Centre uh, when it's yeah. open and not down. 
Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> there's, got, it's like a, there's a lot of things having technical problems. Uh, then I, um, we've got a lot of technical problems in the NHS this week. Uh, I'm not going to blame any countries for doing it. Not going to do that. Um, but we are having a few issues. Uh, but no, um, certainly this, I would say take more, more than less, just take lots of pictures and you'll find the one or two out of that that really conveys the, what you're trying to get over, the picture you want to put up in social media and it tells the story. Mm -hmm. So ju just do it. Yeah. And your pal Archie asks, at a typical Rotary convention, on average, how many photographs would you take over the period? Okay. Yeah. We are talking probably in the region of um, 10, 10 to 12,000. Um, oh, my Lord. Oh, my God, yeah. And <laughs> now, oh, my gosh, is that, um, I mean, again, so the cameras I have will take two memory cards, um, and they're quite big. And when you, you've got to watch that you've not been drinking, uh, which is quite normal at Rotary events the night before, and you've got a slight shaky hand because, they, as I said, one of those cameras can take up to 20 frames a second. And that camera, each image is, it takes a JPEG uh, of about 40, 40 megabyte, and it takes a, a raw file mm -hmm. uh, of exceedingly big as well. Um, so you can end up really filling up a camera memory card pretty quickly. But most of the times I've got laptops um, to, 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 to back that up. The only thing about a laptop is I found, and it's funny, my laptop's trying to do a, a backup, uh, well, uh, an upgrade to now. But uh, we were in Atlanta and Bill Gates was speaking. And the night before, Windows 10 started to do an update. And I just, no. And, so any questions, you know, any questions from the audience to Bill Gates? Now, I was tempted to put my hand up and say, look, Windows 10, it is crap. Anytime I need it, it wants to do a software update. And the other thing is, uh, if we're trying to pump images back to, say, D Dave King is Rotary Editor from the end of the conferences, we've got to really condense them down because sending across a 40 megabyte uh, picture is not easy over from a hotel uh, mm -hmm. uh, when the Wi-Fi is really slow. So mm -hmm. yeah, 10 to 12,000 pictures is usually. Oh. Uh, and that's just to try and get some reasonably good ones. So you must be, if you're looking through, so you're sitting in your hotel at night, a wee dram beside you, and you're looking through all these photographs, that must take hours. Do you think you've missed some good photographs because there's so many of them? Um, you can spot, I think you can spot right away. And it's just a case of no, 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 no. Oh, that's not bad. I'll go look, look at that one. Um, uh, uh, yes. Uh, and the other thing is they need, pro uh, they do need processed as well. They need what we'd call cropped. So you want to take out some of the, the bits you don't want. Uh, if there was a Rotarian really annoying me, then that's when I'd use Photoshop and I would take them out of the picture. And uh, you're not getting the picture. Uh, so yeah. I'm Scottish. I mean, it's like, it comes natural. You know, you cross us, you're out. Yeah. And yeah, uh, so that's, that's just us. But no, uh, yes, it does take a bit of time to, uh -huh, to uh -huh. update uh, and that, there's no doubt about uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. Yeah, good. So uh, finally, Mary, Mary Adams, she's an ARPIC as well from the Rotary Club of Narbeth and Whitland, West Wales. So we we are quite international today. She, it's just a tip she wants to say. She says, if you ask children to do something different, they will always add their own pose to it. As Peter says, make it fun, connect with them and build a relationship before the photographs is taken. And also she says, she goes on to say that teachers will know in schools who to remove from photographs. And we've Absolutely. had that with some of our meal packs, yeah. I, mm. I have done that when I've done the purple for polio days and at the schools. Yeah. And yes, we, we said, you know, there was a couple of, and, and that's not a problem. You know, it, it, in that way, we can take that out. I would say the children, I, it, one of the conferences, especially Young Citizen of the Year, I gave out to my cameras, to, to the youngsters, and they, they were taking pictures. They will get pictures a lot better, a lot more natural than you or I could maybe do, because children, young people will act differently around adults mm -hmm. than they do around themselves. And the only thing is I got into big trouble from the sergeant in arms at, 
uh, the conference. So who gave that that youngster a camera? They're being really annoying. And I said, well, save your powder, son, until you see them on stage and what they've done, and then come back to me and see whether they shouldn't have had the camera. And I sometimes think as Rotarians, we, we don't connect this and this quickly enough. And, you know, we can't force kids to behave in a fashion that is, you know, be seen and not heard. Youngsters will be youngsters. But yes, youngsters will get really good pictures as well. I mean, I'm um, taken back to um, a visit out to Kabira and we let the youngsters take selfies, group selfies. And the connection we had with them just to do that, you wouldn't normally ha hand over your expensive iPhone, but I handed it over and the photographs that we got back were very heartwarming. It was, it was a lovely thing. So that's, that's a good point. So, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is people, I did get, somebody said, well, was I not worried that somebody might, well, the, the, one of the, the youngsters, uh, he was a teenager, said, mm. was I not worried that you might steal the camera from me? And we were at the Rotary con conference in Belfast, and I said, look, son, we're in Belfast. Mm. Things can be organized. If you steal my camera, we'll find you. <laughs> we'll find you. We'll make you out. No, that's good. Well, I think we've come to the end of the session. That was, that was a, a really good session, Peter. Thanks very much. And a lot of great hints and tips. And I, thought, I think if people are listening now, actually some of the, the key takeaways for me is, have a wee thought about the projects that you're doing. And if you, are, if you must take check presentations, certainly think about how you're posing them, what you're doing, look at the outcomes rather than just there's the check and have a, just a bit of a thought about your photographs and use these props that we've seen in the background. I use them quite a lot and it, it does make a difference. And the backdrops, um, you know, a few plugs there for Rotor Store. We've got the Gazebo in our club and what a difference it makes. It just makes a huge difference. So I'll thank you once again, Peter. I think Peter is going to be online. So if there's any more questions, uh, it'll be available online. But I think it's now time to invite Phil and Phil is going to be talking about how to do your rotary graphics. Now we're, we're asked about this loads of times and this is quite an exciting uh, presentation. So uh, without any further ado, over to you Phil. That's uh, very kind of you. Uh, great presentation Peter, always always good to hear you, uh, always good to make you feel um, slightly concerned when you talk about the value of your camera equipment. It's always very amusing. Um, so there you go. Right. Well, let's go into a screen share now. Uh, so um, we're going to talk uh, today about graphics and design and making your photographs and your graphics stand out in social media and externally when broadcast. Uh, so we won't dwell too much. Uh, Phil Diet, you all know me. I'm currently the president of Prescott and have another couple of jobs elsewhere uh, around the place. Um, you'll recall last month when we talked about um, branding, uh, we touched on um, several uh, different types of graphic support. Um, and these were the four that we mentioned. Uh, there is um, Canva, uh, PowerPoints, uh, Adobe InDesign and Adobe Photoshop. I know Peter's mentioned Photoshop there, both very powerful. Uh, we're going to not touch on them today, but we're going to concentrate on Canva and um, PowerPoint. Um, I use them uh, pr pretty, pretty much uh, exclusively. Um, and um, it's, uh, they work really well for me. So I'm just juggling a couple of screens here. So Canva, it, it's a, a, a free tool. Um, you just go onto the website, uh, canva.com and you register for a free, a free account. Uh, the, the, a bit like all of these things, uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So a, um, there is a pro version uh, and a, another couple of versions if you want multiple licenses. Um, the free version, you get pretty much most of it uh, uh, free, uh, the, the functionality. Um, I, I use a pro account, uh, I utilize it uh, for some, some work uh, that I do uh, with my day job. Uh, so we've got a pro, a pro account, uh, which is really good. Uh, so there's a couple of things that are handy there. Um, everything's saved online. Um, you can create your asset. 
uh, for uh, most uh, social media types. So it will size the, the graphic to suit. Uh, so you put it in if it's a Twitter post or a Facebook post, uh, et cetera. Um, and it is predominantly there to produce a graphic. Uh, there are some templates for um, um, flyers and, uh, and posters, etc. but it's all single or double page uh, templates. You can put multiple pages in, uh, but you'd have to p p piece together the, the pictures. Um, you can download them as a, a PDF uh, for a post printing, uh, or you can download as JPEG or uh, J um, PNG files uh, for social media distribution. Um, it automatically saves everything there for you. Um, it's really good. Um, it's free, so go and have a play with Canva. Uh, hopefully, well, we are going to try and do a Canva live uh, this morning, which would be good. So um, the next one is PowerPoint. Everyone's used PowerPoint, and if you've been using it for as long as I have, you'll have fallen asleep to many a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm, although that's got a, a, a place to do a presentation a bit like this, which is being created on PowerPoints, the way we're going to use it today is just to create a graphic. So a single slide or a couple of slides that can be used to, um, uh, to, to, to make a graphic. Uh, one of the beauties about PowerPoint is that you can save your slide as a JPEG uh, PNG or a PDF and JPEG and PNG are excellent for social media distribution. So um, what I'd like you to think about as I'm talking this morning is if Rotary is all about telling our story and we always talk about Rotary storytelling, what story is being written right now? You may recall this slide from uh, last, uh, last month. Um, people buy with their eyes and as Peter has alluded to, the use of excellent uh, photography makes all the difference. We live in a world now where social media and graphics and photographs are the norm. People expect that. So they sift through with their eyes for the most engaging of images and the most engaging of photographs to glean their information and news. And we need to step our game up so a blurred, uh, out of focus, uh, not correctly thought about photograph will just get skipped through. It's almost a waste of um, posting time. Think about your photograph, think about your graphic and think about your message. So um, we're now going to get into a little bit of nuts and bolts uh, of, the, uh, of the session. Uh, I'm going to stop the share and I'm just going to reshare a different screen so we'll make sure we're all ready. Uh, which we are, and here we go. So, so this is Canva. Uh, this is the opening screen of Canva. You can uh, you can see um, uh, there that we've um, we we're logged in um, and we're, we're ready ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to try and do this live. So bear with me. Not not done this before. Uh, so we're going to do something with volunteering. So I'm going to search all the different templates within Canva that have the word volunteering. We're going to scroll down and you can see all of these. These are all ready to go and these can be all fully edited. Uh, so I've done a little bit of prep before here. So the one I'm going to pick today is this one here. Um, and I quite like this. Uh, it's, it's, it's a simple uh, uh, slide. Uh, it's actually got two slides on it. Uh, we don't need the second one. So we're going to um, just use the first one. I've just deleted that. Um, obviously, the wording is completely um, inappropriate here. So, uh, but I like the word needs you. So what can we do to that? Well, I am just going to literally go in here and edit this. And we are going to go rotary needs you. And we might put it over the three lines there. Uh, we can move this around this box uh, to, to suit what, what we're trying to achieve. And what I would quite like to do is insert some Rotary logo here. So um, in the uh, left hand side here, we have a palette of tools and we pick uploads. Uh, and like all Blue Peter presentations, here is the um, um, something that I've prepared earlier. 
Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a mark of excellence and we're going to insert that and it drops it straight into the middle there. Uh, you can pick up these little handles here and size to suit where you need it. Uh, so we are rotary, I uh, like it, um, I think something like that. Um, it's time to give back, rotary needs you, uh, join our team today, become a volunteer. I quite like all of that. Um, we appreciate every helping hand we can get, and that's okay. I think that's a little bit bigger. Uh, let's stick, whilst we are in Rotary in the Northwest, let's stick our district identifier, not with district 1285 on, because no one cares whether the district 1285 or 1286. So there we have. Now it's, in my opinion, not great colours here. So uh, let's, uh, let's change the colours. And it's dead simple, so uh, you pick a colour, um, and what you would do uh, is you would uh, colour correct these colours. Uh, there's a, an opportunity here to colour correct them, and in the background here, if I just um, bring my, I won't share it uh, with you, let's just see if I can do it. He says, struggling, here we go. So I know, for example, that Rotary Blue from the brand sensor has a hex code, hex, let's try hex, here we go, zero C. This is, um, we're doing this uh, zero C, three C, seven C. That doesn't look quite as, as that's, that's rotary blue. Uh, we might change the um, the colour here. Let me just go back here. The text of the word. There's nothing like uh, live. Uh, so we change that. Let's change. So we've got our, our hand there. Uh, we might make that yellow and white. I quite like that, and I think this piece of text here, now here, this is grouped together. So you just need to ungroup it to get the original text, which is this little bit here. I like that. Uh, let's make that yellow. So we've got, um, there you go. So that's a few seconds there, and we have created a, a Rotary Need You volunteer flyer. It's time to give back. Uh, what you might be able to do here is pop in some um, uh, contact details uh, and a call to action. So we might say um, something like, uh, find us on Facebook at Rotary Northwest. And we've got an email address, which is volunteer at uh, Rotary. Let me just get the spelling right. People who know me will know my spelling is absolutely exemplary. Rotary um, 1285.org.uk from memory. Uh, we might think that's a little bit small, so we can make it a little bit bigger. That's a little bit too big, Phil. Uh, that's a little bit too big. Let's go back to here. Um, let's just include it all of that oops so we'll just highlight all that text in there and make it um we might just stretch that out there we go that looks a bit better nice and neat uh one final adjustment before we save let's just make that just a shade bigger um let's go with that one uh, i'm pretty pleased with that uh, as, a, as, a, as an end. Uh, so what we would do there is we would download it. Uh, so you click the download button and you download the PDF, uh, a PNG, a JPEG, uh, and there is options for uh, video and GIFs there, but we'll download it as a PNG. It asks you for a, a size. And um, if you can just about see here, there's a pixel size underneath here. So we've got a small pixel size. I normally pick middle for diddle. 
um, which gives you a, a you know a very large pixel size there with 2857 by 4000 pixels and we download it um, prepares your design and what we will do um, with uh, that particular image uh, if I can just uh, find it just uh, it's just hidden there a little bit then um, I don't know if you can see that but there's the image that we have uh, downloaded and I will arrange for that to be issued to all participants at the end it'll be on social media as a little um, as a little uh, image that we took today so uh, back uh, back in the room that is uh, Canva it's very easy to use it's web-based no specialist uh, software needed everything's done online clearly you need an internet connection um, you do everything online and everything is saved in your accounts and then you just download the asset that you've created and distribute it uh, locally as, a, as as seen there as a JPEG or a, a PNG file. Um, so hopefully that's of, of use there. That's a, a very simple one uh, just to get your, uh, your um, involvement in Canva. Um, Canva has a very distinct look. Uh, it's quite fresh and modern and there are literally Ten, maybe not tens of thousands, but thousands of templates to choose from. Uh, we picked a very uh, a simple one there, uh, but there's lots with photographs. Uh, and of course, you can upload your own photographs uh, to the uh, to the to the web portal, and then bring that uh, that picture of your own in there. Uh, specifically, we're concentrating on graphics today, and I hope that gives you a insight into uh, how to use Canva. Um, I'm very easy to contact, so if you've got any problems, uh, just uh, dr uh, drop me an email or, or find me on, on Facebook. So we're going to have another little go now, and we are going to uh, try and do something on PowerPoint, uh, which I've sort of prepared a little bit earlier. So uh, let's see how we go there. So please bear with me as I share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so what we've got here is um, a standard PowerPoint. Um, I've um, just got a little bit of prep going in the background, but this is what you would uh, start with uh, on your uh, opening a new document. Uh, now I personally like to start from scratch. So the, uh, the idea that it gives you a couple of boxes, I um, remove first. Uh, one of the first things that you need to know in PowerPoint, because remember that we're not using it as a slideshow tool, we're using it as a, as a graphics tool here, is to decide the size of your canvas or your piece of paper. And if you go to um, design across the top here, there is an option to choose a slide size. And in here, you can choose uh, a number of preset sizes. Uh, on screen letter a3 a4 etc uh, and also a custom size um, for, the, for the benefit of this I, I think we'll, ju we'll, we'll just keep it at a4 just ju just because it's nice and easy and as a default setting a4 is not a plus bad place to start for those that want to be a little bit techy you can uh, imprint in here you can de delete here and you can put in pixels so if you are specifically after after a particular size of asset to suit particular pixels um, then you can uh, type them in there uh, i'm sorry that was in uh, centimeters you need to put um, px after it and it automatically converts that to um, uh, so you can see there we've got a, a long thing because it's now sized that to 900 pixels in height um, but I will go back and choose um, A4. Um, it gives you a couple of options here. Maximise the fit, which is almost like a zoomed in view, or ensure the fit. I always pick ensure the fit. So um, let's have a little go here. We need to introduce a graphic that we're going to work with. So you would go to the insert menu and you would insert a uh, a picture from uh, either this device 
which is located locally on your hard drive or you would uh, download it from stock images and I'll come on to that in a minute uh, or online pictures so online pictures are a, a, a lot online depository and I'll come on to that in a moment I have to say on uh, stock images in with your subscription to PowerPoint you get access to all the, these types of images now these are all um, rights protected images there is no copyright on any of these images these are here for distribution uh, some of them are not the, 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 the greatest um, um, uh, editorial value uh, and something that you might be looking specifically you might have to uh, pay for but there is loads to choose from here and you can search by um, background or you know uh, anything you want uh, so we've got clocks here and animals and uh, landscapes etc so um, we're going to have a little play around uh, with an image that I've pulled uh, down already um, and I'm just going to drag it in so normally I would go I'll just show you again uh, pictures um, insert pictures from this device uh, but I've got an image ready and I'm going to play around today with the um, the hashtag we use in Rotary hashtag get Rotary uh, because I think that's uh, that that plays quite um, uh, plays quite well so I've got an image here that I've downloaded already and I'm just going to drop that into the screen um, as you can see it is not quite fitting the uh, the the, um, the the border this is a high-res image that I've brought in and we need to adjust that to suit uh, so there's a couple of ways of doing that you could just resize it uh, so you can drop it into the corner and, and, and resize it uh, which is there uh, which is not a bad way of doing things uh, but I think we probably lose a little bit of the, uh, the, the hashtag here uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to just set it over here and then we're going to make it a little bit bigger like so and then we're going to crop back to our A4 page so let me just show you that again that's uh, right click crop and you get the black handles here and you'll pick them black handles up and you'll go and it'll snap with the red line as you can see there to the edge of your paper again you'll pick this up here uh, bring it to the edge of your paper here uh, crop I'm just gonna make sure I'm not over I'm not I'm okay there and it's there so that's our image there um, again we might want to drop in a logo so um, just for speed you go insert pictures uh, from uh, this device and browse to the location of any pre-saved rotary logos and those uh, members of the audience today that are from uh, district 1285 you'll notice that the public image team um, via one of our um, uh, team members Paul Scullion issued all of the logos for your particular club uh, at the start of the rotary year so you have a suite of districts and a suite of club logos that have already been distributed that's how uh, how good we are to you in district 1285 um, just for ease today i'm just going to drag them in because i've got a screen um uh, ready next door so we've got our road trip northwestern england and isle of man logo too big there so let's shove that down into the bottom corner um, and I think it looks okay there. We're um, we're clearly um, part of a, a, a bigger organisation, and I have uh, would like to use the mark of excellence uh, as we used on the Canva logo. Uh, so let me just drag that in again. It rubs it into the middle, and all you need to do uh, now is uh, size that to suit. Uh, so that would be uh, somewhere there. I would be quite happy there. You can move it around. You get some guidelines uh, uh, to, to, to help you sometimes, but I'm quite happy there. So the hashtag, two fingers there and uh, uh, crossed over, looks like a hashtag. So we need to put a, a, a text box next to that. So um, the text box, uh, you would draw a box to suit and the words that we're going to use today are, um, are get in fact i will probably do it like this rotary 
um, too small. So you can pick from your fonts here, uh, change the fonts. Uh, those that uh, have read the brand guidelines coming to work will know what the, the, the fonts are. Uh, but uh, the font for the rotary lettering is Neo Sans. Uh, so we'd, uh, we'd put that in, uh, we'd make it bold, uh, we'd make it big. So let's get uh, something like that. And let's sh shove that there. Uh, we make the text box a little bit smaller just so it's nicely contained within our, um, our, our page there. Um, and we need some contact details. So how would prospective people who want to get involved uh, get in touch uh, with Rotary? Uh, well, I'm going to slightly cheat here uh, and, and show you a couple of workarounds that I've got. So on this slide here, I've already downloaded uh, an icon sheet uh, from the internet, widely available. So if you type in social media icons, you'll pick up a, a graphic like so. And um, you can um, uh, crop this to suit your logos. So if you just wanted the Facebook logo, you crop down to there and you'd get the Facebook logo that you can move around. Uh, if you wanted another one, so what you do is copy, create another one and crop and then bring back, so say you wanted the uh, Twitter logo, you just crop into the Twitter logo here. And there you have a, a Twitter logo to match your Facebook one. And this is what I was trying to create here. Um, so I, um, as with all good, uh, I, I have one uh, prepared. So what we'll do here is we'll just stretch that out slightly. Just bear with me one second as I prepare this for you. And we make it all look good. We know that our social media in the Northwest is Rotary NW. So we would pick those six assets up. So that's three logos, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Rotary Northwest. We'd copy that and we bring it back to our base graphic, which is here, and we paste it in. Now it's brought it in a little bit small. Now you don't want to mess around with all those uh, six assets all the time. You've got a little control box here. If you click on that and go paste as a photograph, it brings it in as one photograph now. So it can be edited to suit. So now we have got our little logos all created uh, with a call to action for where people can find out some more information about um, uh, about Rotary. Uh, but you might want to just put a little text box in just to add some information and entice them to get in touch. So maybe something like um, uh, is time to uh, a time for you to get involved. Something as simple as that. And what you do there is it's a bit small, so you'd highlight it, make it a little bit bigger, uh, quite like that on the split line. It's as simple as that. And that's a simple graphic that's taken us a few minutes to pull up. It's a stock image. It's bright, it's fresh, it's enticing. People would look at that uh, and the hashtag. Uh, I, I, I quite like the feel of that. It's got a, a, a place for us to get in touch at Rotary Northwest um, uh, on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, I, I quite like that. So what you would do then is file, um, save, um, save as, and then bring up a, um, an option to save it as a particular file type, as we've said. We want to save it as a JPEG. Uh, you press save. Uh, it asks you if you've got multiple slides in there. If you recall, we've got the second slide in there with the Facebook logos that are manipulated. We don't want to do that. We just want to save this particular one. And that would save that particular graphic 
as a JPEG. Um, uh, and away we go. Uh, that would be ready for distribution. So hopefully in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes there, we've created two assets, albeit quite simple graphics, uh, one in Canva um, for volunteering and a, and, a, and, a, and a call to action to, to get in touch with um, uh, Rotary Northwest, uh, and also one about hashtag get Rotary, uh, something that you could put out uh, to, um, to harness uh, membership uh, in, your, in your part of the world. Uh, like I say, they can be completely edited to suit you. So if they were an event uh, uh, or, um, or anything you were doing uh, with regard to, to Rotary, uh, they can be put together. And of course, instead of inserting a graphic, you could also insert a, a photograph. And Pete has shown you the art of photography this morning. Uh, so using uh, a photograph and putting a, uh, some text or a logo ac across it. Uh, is hopefully that little bit easier for you to do now. Um, there are more options when you get more advanced software. So uh, Adobe InDesign, uh, which is what we use for all the assets for Together Talks and Rotary Great Britain and Ireland use. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, uh, but you get uh, significantly more um, options and more powerful to do, to do multiple things. And, and Photoshop, you can do just about anything you want from graphics to photographs and, and, and tweak the photograph from just a, a small amount of colour correction uh, right through to, uh, to pro proper uh, manipulation of the, of the photograph for, um, for, for other uses. Um, I would stick with uh, PowerPoint. I really like PowerPoint. Uh, those that have seen some of the stuff that I've done in the past, uh, it pulls together... Um, uh, you know, really well, really easy to use. Um, you can put multiple sh uh, um, uh, graphics together and you can actually record them as a, uh, a, an MP4. Uh, maybe we'll cover that as a, a masterclass in future ses sessions about creating uh, a short video. Um, but uh, that is where we're at. So I was just going to show you now, if I go back to my... Um, screen share so there you go here's a, a couple of graphics that i've created some of you will have seen these um i'm the membership uh, team lead for district 1285 so i do a lot relating to membership and joining us and getting involved uh, as um irene suggested at the beginning um i was involved with think differently uh, which was something that was uh, born in 1285 a couple of years ago. Uh, so we've got a little thought there, more of an internal uh, flyer for us to think about uh, our rotary. Doesn't always have to include graphics, but you can put together some words that uh, make all the difference. And um, I, uh, I see that um, you know some, some, some words here uh, that have been put together. This was uh, in COVID. COVID's been a great opportunity for uh, putting little messages out there. Um, stay at home and save the world. Which is, we've got uh, wear a mask um, and keep in public. Then we've got um, stay at home. And here's one that we did on the billboard. Uh, this was quite interesting. A lot of people commented on this, thought it was a real billboard. Um, and... Um, I uh, thought it was a real, uh, a real billboard. Uh, clearly not. It was a graphic that we've adjusted. Uh, together we can make a difference. Here's one that we were created on, um, created on Canva, actually. Uh, like I say, there's a distinct look to Canva. There's another one that was created for um, uh, some PPE that we distributed around the district. And these were little thank you cards that went into the packs of PPE. Here we've got uh, time to engage. Uh, uh, time to volunteer again with a graphic that was brought back at the beginning of all this we thought it would be a good idea to stay in touch and have zoom meetings they are ubiquitous now so uh, this was the 31st of March one of the first zoom meetings that we held again uh, there's a note there that's a Canva one um, happy Easter uh, we've got um, all about wearing the mask so it brings about information 
Uh, I, I quite like this one. Uh, this was uh, an idea I saw on Facebook. So this was 2020, 20 seconds hand washing, two metre distance, no excuses, uh, with a play on 2020. World Rotary Day, I'm sure some of you will remember that on the 23rd of Feb. Another play. Here we have the area of, uh, of, of focus for the, the, the up and coming year. So we've got now we've got a seventh area of focus. I wanted to just touch on, as I sort of bring things to a close on resources, uh, Brand Sensor is where you'll get all your logos. We talked about the Brand Sensor last month, um, but um, you, you'll get mo most of it from there. Uh, there are lots and lots of uh, photo, uh, photographic uh, depositories out there. Here are three. Others are available. Um, personally, I, I use Adobe Stock. The, uh, the, the, there, is a, there is a cost there. Uh, associated uh, but you do get some uh, really really good large format images uh, but there we've got Shut Shutterstock and, and Dreamstime all very much uh, uh, similar yeah put a search word in um, we've got um, a couple of good Facebook websites uh, this is the Rotary public image graphics and hubs idea which is um, controlled by uh, Evan Burrell in Australia, uh, but there's a lot of dialogue goes on that particular Facebook page uh, in association with um, uh, with graphics and ideas. Um, uh, you can see there the people, uh, Irene's already a member of that, as is uh, Dave King. Uh, so it's worth joining that, it's a private group. Uh, so that's uh, uh, got some great resources there. Uh, there's a chap in America called Aaron Sainz, He's worth uh, following if you uh, use Facebook. He puts out some really uh, interesting um, uh, graphics. Uh, I quite like what Aaron does. And he's a big believer of wearing the, ro uh, the um, a bow tie. There's a little image of him there wearing a, a wooden rotary bow tie, no less. Uh, we've mentioned Evan, uh, Evan Burrell there. Um, uh, the, so um, Evan is, uh, uses a, a lot of rotary graphics to, to get over his particular points. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, worth uh, following him, Evan Borrell, uh, Rotarian. Uh, I have a few takeaways for you today. Um, of course, as with all good webinars and presentations, uh, not a KFC in sight, uh, but as Peter suggested, um, and we say at Masterclass One, you know, tell your rotary story. Uh, that's what it's all, it's all about. Uh, it's not just a photograph for the sake of a photograph stake. It needs to, uh, to have a message in there. Um, use the correct brand. Those that know me know that I'm a, 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 a big advocate of the rotary brand. It's an amazing uh, resource we have there on the brand center and should be used at all, uh, all times. Uh, use great photographs. Uh, never more so, uh, as, as Peter explained, um, it, it needs to be a, a great photograph and you need to make the photograph and not just take it. Don't just uh, fire away, uh, but, uh, but enable yourselves the opportunity of, of, of making a good photograph. And lastly, um, be interesting. So be interesting in your photographs. People, there's hundreds and hundreds of photographs go out on on Facebook and unless it's an interesting engaging photograph it'll just get flicked through yeah 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 and it's the interesting picture and the enticing engaging vibrant picture that makes the difference uh, so that would be my takeaway for um, I hope you've enjoyed that I would welcome any questions thank you very much Thank you ever so much, Phil. Uh, very informative, as usual, very informative. And now it's interesting, we've, we've got a few questions coming up here, uh, but it is interesting, it is very, what's very clear is that just with a, a little bit of thought, you can create your own graphic very simply and just play around with it. Now, Phil's done it for a long time. I've done it not as, not as long as Phil, but you can do it quite easily. Uh, for those that have Apple devices, uh, you can use pages. I tend to favour PowerPoint and pages. It just depends what you're used to. They've all got the same templates and you can look at them. So uh, the one thing that it was very clear to me is you must have your call to action. 
uh, there's no it's all very well having your fancy graphics but it's got to tell uh, you've got to have a story and get that call to action in there so right to the questions now we've got a number of questions here Roy Smith from my club Warrington wants to know how much you pay for your copyright images Adobe stocks standard uh, standard charge is about 23 quid a month and you get 10, 10 images for that um, and I make sure I take 10 images whether I need them or not I'll take 10 images so there is a cost to that unfortunately um, but you need to be careful uh, with your images uh, if Dave King was here now he'd be telling us about the uh, copyright protection mm -hmm. and we need to, to, to watch that um, we need to watch that so I tend to use uh, copyrighted images there is a there is an option on Google when you search images that you can search for and let me remember the terminology it's um, I can't just remember it escapes me there is a, a term um, for um, I'll just try and find it whilst I'm talking about it you can search for um, I'll ask you another question while you're looking at that. Yeah. Now, I've noticed this in a few of the graphics and a few of the graphics that some people have done, you've got your own copyright um, emblem. And Alan Jagger asked about this and he's asked, do we need permission? But I think it's not about that, it's about something else. So Phil, would you talk about your uh, copyright? Yeah, so I, I, put, I do put copyright Phil Dyer on. Uh, what the way I view that is, I can meet aim to produce the the graphic which which I use, and I think it should be respected. You know, there's time and effort and resources gone into producing that image, and I think it should be respected. I, having said that, I, I'm delighted that it can be distributed, um, uh, distributed. And if you want to make a little mention, thanks, Phil. That is that's all that we ask. There, there is an upper limit on the distribution of these uh, graphical images, but it's quite a high uh, print count or, or visibility count uh, of, a, of about 100,000. Uh, and and they'd, have to, they'd have to prove that as well. Uh, so I, I'm happy for all of my stuff to be, um, um, to be distributed. Uh, um, but, but like I say, I, I, I create them in my own time with my own resources. And I just maybe feel that... Um, it, it, it should be used a the way it was intended and and they maybe acknowledge that you know phil did it um you'll notice that um yeah evan burrell aaron signs do just put a little note on uh, there's a there's a chap in um uh, san francisco club as well and he puts a little moniker on uh, just to um uh, just to tie it back it also as well ties it back to me so if you ever get picked up for using that image and go you haven't got copyright to use that you can say yeah i have i asked phil if i borrow it and he said yes and i've got the license so there you go um it's just um yeah but i don't mind you using my images whatsoever yeah no that's that, that's that's absolutely clear now i i want to talk a wee bit i want to talk to you a wee bit about the district identifier the ri identifier and club identifiers who can use these you know, you know, I'm a public image uh, district lead. Um, I can use up to a certain level. So, who can use what, Phil? What What do you think about that? Well, um, the, the the way I would view that is that uh, if I'm putting something out specifically for Prescott, then I always use the Prescott identifier. Um, ha having said that, I sometimes think that there's a little bit wider a wider um, audience for that particular graphic. Uh, so, for example, if you remember the billboard graphic that we put up, uh, put up there, I think there's a little bit of wider feel for it. Um, and and uh, I am part of the Rotary International uh, public image team. Uh, so I'm a, a, an RPIC for, uh, for um, Region 20, as is Peter. Um, and putting a Rotary-based livery on the bottom of, of that graphic is, is sort of part of the, the remit of being a... Uh, a Rotary public image co coordinator. Um, if I'm putting it out for the district, of course, um, uh, uh, as, as you know, Irene, we tend to use uh, uh, Northwest England and Isle of Man, uh, and that identifies us for that part of the, of the, of the UK. Uh, and I would I tend to do that. Um, I have to say, there's a little bit more wider appeal if you put it out with a uh, with just the Rotary logo on it. Uh, and there was a little video went out uh, with the, the, the Google search or uh, um, an implication it was the Google search for volunteering. 
um, and that went out as Prescott and as Rotary International. So um, if you're doing something for your club and it's a club event, then it needs to have your club identifier on. If you're doing it for the district and it's a district event or an associate to a district, it needs to have uh, that, that identifier on. Um, I think the, the one that's a little bit in between is the Rotary Great Britain and Ireland. And Alster like to, um, uh, con not, control sounds a, a little bit strong, but ju just keep their, uh, their, their presence uh, consistent. Uh, so I don't tend to use Rotary Great Britain and Ireland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helps. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's very clear. Um, because what we don't want is um, images going out there the, with our own district identifiers on it or an RI identifier on it. And actually it's rubbish. We can't have that. So it's just about getting the feel for it and getting it right. Now, another question here from Ravi, and this is, I think it's possibly been answered, and it's talking about the downloaded rotary uh, logos. He's wondering if they're on Canva or are they available preloaded? Um, we've probably answered that, but maybe yeah, not to be They're not, they're not preloaded, uh, but the, the, the images that we've sent to the district secretaries, the, uh, sorry, club secretaries, club presidents, and club public image leads are in a little folder and they have um, your club logos. When you go to Canva, there's an upload button, you upload a new mm -hmm. asset, and once it's in your account, it stays there forever. Uh, so you can down, upload them all, no, no problem at all. Uh, but Canva don't put put your your club logo in in without you putting it there. Right, no good. And um, Mary uh, asks, how do you make the copyright? Well, that's dead easy. That um, in, if you well, uh, so in Canva you need to um, in Canva you need to down, down, download an icon. Uh, and upload the icon and put it in as a little picture. Uh, but in um, PowerPoint, you do um, uh, open bracket C close bracket, and it makes a, a, a copyright logo, a bit like you do uh, colon uh, right bracket to get a smiley face. So it's open bracket small C close bracket, and that makes the copyright logo dead easy. Excellent, little, that's dead easy. Microsoft suite there. Yeah, that's dead easy. Um, so Ian McTurk, he's asking a technical question. Well, it's a, you know, technical question. I do not have NeoSans standard text facility as a choice on my PowerPoint. Have you a super version of PP PowerPoint? Um, well, you've no, got something that he's got not got. Version of PP, <laughs> but I have downloaded the mm -hmm. uh, have downloaded the fonts. Unfortunately, they're a purchasable font, so. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to you need to you need to buy the fonts as true type mm -hmm. fonts. Um, they're not particularly expensive, but uh, as you can see, um, yeah. So you need to use it. There are um, fonts of, of available in the brand center, which are mm -hmm. uh, Rotary compatible. So uh, Fujitsu is 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 one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sentinel, uh, Georgia are, 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 are fonts, and generally, um, if you're struggling. Uh, you know, Arial is the default, um, uh, but Neo Sans is, a, is a, unfortunately a purchasable font. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So Alan's asking a question. I'm not quite sure really about this. So he says, Alan Ingram says, can I create a JPEG and put it out on Instagram as an advert for next week's meeting? Will they charge me? I'm not quite sure about that, Phil. Maybe you know something about that. No, it's just a, it's just a photograph. You're not. Yeah. Uh, they won't charge you at all. It's just mm -hmm. a, a flyer, effectively. You can put whatever you want on there. Uh, so, you know, uh, meet me for a cup of tea next week or club meeting. It's not an advertisement as such. Um, mm -hmm. And you're just putting it out on your feed. So you, mm -hmm. can, you can put that mm -hmm. out on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at any time. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that's almost at the end of the questions. I th in fact, it definitely is. There's been a few questions about will these webinars be available? Yes, they will be. They'll be available, I think, this weekend, Phil. Yes. On uh, YouTube. Uh, we'll be putting them out. They'll be sending them out to all people who registered or go on to social media. So you'll get another chance to have a look at that and to go into some of the technical details there. So I, I'll just take me now to thank Phil once again for an excellent presentation. And if you've got any questions, you can ask us. Ask us, ask me, ask Phil, ask anyone in the public image. So it's um, some great hints and tips there. And it just shows 
that it's not just about the logo, it's about, there's all sorts of things involved in creating this poster, but it's easy done. So get cracking with that, I see. So what's coming up next month? Next month is social media. I'm going to be talking about some things in social media. We'll have a guest, a guest presenter. So it just is enough for me to say enjoy your weekend. I hope that you've enjoyed what you've had this morning and um, get cracking with those posters. I'd love to see them. So once again, thank you very much. <laughs>